Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Meena Kulkarni and I'll be presenting before you a webinar on advancements in light cure units. Since the birth of dentistry, there has been a continuous attempt to formulate a restorative material and technique which fulfills aesthetic requirements besides having the expected physical, mechanical and biological properties to behave favorably in the oral environment. With the advancing research in bonding, a need for an appropriate curing unit has always been felt. In this presentation, I will be attempting to review the history, advantages and disadvantages of various light curing units available and the recent advances in the LCU technology. The light curing unit is an instrument capable of generating and transmitting a high intensity blue light with a wavelength oscillating between 400 and 500 nanometers and is designed specifically to polymerize visible light sensitive dental material. These resins contain a photosensitizer, camphoroquinone CQ, which absorbs blue light within the wavelengths 400 to 500 nanometers. Light curable dental composites are supplied as a single paste contained in a life-proof syringe. The free radical initiating system consisting of a photosensitizer and an amine initiator is contained in this paste. As long as these two components are not exposed to light, they do not interact. However, exposure to light in the blue region, wavelength of about 468 nanometers, produces an excited state of the photosensitizer which then interacts with the amine to form free radicals that initiate addition polymerization. The photopolymerization process is of a great importance because it plays a major role in the resultant properties of the final material. However, the properties of light are dependent on its source. The efficiency and light quality of the light cure device directly affect the longevity and the clinical performance of RC. The following diagram lists the common sequelae of under and over curing of resin composites. In the case of under curing, we have low mechanical properties, less color stability, leaching of the unreacted monomer, pulpal and soft tissue irritation, and recurrent caries. In the case of over curing, we have heat generation, pulpal and soft tissue irritation, and long chair time. There are other photoinitiators which have different spectral absorption values. They are leucerin TPO, PPD, and ivocerin. Let us see some of the terminology used for light curing. Radiant energy is the energy from the curing light source. Radiant exposure is the energy emitted or received. Radiant exitance is the radiant power or flux emitted from a defined area. It is used instead of power density or irradiance. Now, irradiance is the radiant power on the surface and spectral irradiance is the irradiance at a particular wavelength. Now, let us see the history and evolution of light curing units. In the 1970s, we had the first curing light developed by dense ply, which was the ultraviolet light. The next type of curing light was the quartz halogen bulb. In the 1990s, we had great improvements in light curing devices, which led to 1995 having the solid state LED technology. In 1998, the plasma arc curing light was introduced and recently dental lasers have come into focus. The first dental curing unit was developed in the 1970s. It was the Nuva light that used ultraviolet light in order to cure the material. The first photo curing units were designed to emit ultraviolet light about 365 nanometers through a quartz rod from a high pressure mercury source. This development was seen as a revolutionary step in dentistry. However, this was discontinued because of the drawbacks of ultraviolet light used in the system. Furthermore, 
These lights were not very effective due to the shorter wavelengths that limited the depth of the cure. The next type of curing light that was developed was the quartz halogen bulb. This device had longer wavelengths of the visible light spectrum and allowed for greater penetration of curing light and light energy. This new halogen curing light replaced the UV curing light. These lights contain a lamp with a tungsten filament in an inert gas with a small amount of halogen gas. An electric current passing through the QTH heats the tungsten up to 2700 degrees Celsius and creates visible light and infrared radiation. The light is filtered to approximately 380 to 500 nanometers. The advantage of this unit is that the emission spectrum from the QTH units is broad and enables the activation of most types of photo initiators currently found in dental resin. The disadvantages of these units are short curing depth, gradual loss of high energy wavelengths in their light output, very high heat generation as most of its energy dissipated in the form of heat rather than visible light. They only use 9% of the total energy produced and majority of it is dissipated as heat and so requires a cooling fan and filter. Furthermore, this light requires frequent monitoring and replacement of the actual curing light bulb because of the high temperatures that are reached. In the mid-1990s, Plasma Arc was introduced as a more affordable and high-speed curing light. This light uses xenon gas which is distilled from liquid air and then an electric current is passed through the gas which ionizes it and produces negatively and positively charged particles. The high-powered light thus produced is then filtered to an effective curing wavelength of 450 to 500 nanometers. These lights have an energy level of 900 millivolt to 2000 millivolt. The advantage is it can cure the composite in two seconds. And the disadvantage is that they are expensive and produce more heat. So filters and ventilating fans are required. Because of the massive amount of radiation emitted falling outside of narrow limits needed for dental photo curing, a substantial amount of filtering is required in these lights. Thus, what appears to be a fiber octave light guide transferring light from the source in the tabletop unit to the intraoral target is really nothing but a three foot long optical fiber. Inside of this cord, is a special liquid that helps to further reduce unwanted IR, UV and visible light. The very broad spectral emission of this type of light can be seen to provide high levels of photons to every one of the photo initiators described so far. LEDs were introduced by Mills in 1995. They used junctions of doped semiconductors to generate visible light with no light filtration required. LEDs are highly efficient light sources that produce light within a narrow spectral range. Blue LED curing units have an advantage over halogen light curing units in the sense that they are inexpensive. The LED unit has no bulb or filter that requires maintenance. They do not require filters because they emit light at specific wavelengths within the 400 to 500 nanometer range and over time, only little degradation of the light output is observed. The first blue LED curing lights were experimental prototype models built to test the concept that they could generate light at the correct wavelength and deliver sufficient number of photons needed to successfully photo cure dental resin based materials. It has low power output. It has low irradiance level ranging from 100 to 280 milliwatt per centimeter squares in comparison to QTH which is about 400 milliwatt per centimeter square. Cure 2 millimeters increment of composite in longer time than the QTH which takes 60 seconds. But it was easy to handle with less heat generation without using fans in comparison to the QTH light curing system. It has a narrow spectral range suitable for camphoroquinone CQ initiated composite resin. These units have an irradiance increasing turbo tip, 5 mm cans, 
array is typically from 8 to 64 in number of LEDs, flat, very intense discrete LED chips of small area, but emitting a very intense light. The chips are still individual and are arranged to optimize light output and maximize heat dissipation. Examples of such a diode array, along with its large heat sink, are seen in the figure. As we can see, the spectral emission from this light would be effective towards CQ and PPD, but not for TPO. With advances in chip technology, LEDs consuming 10 and 15 watts become incorporated, further increasing irradiance values and allowing lower exposure values to achieve optimal photo curing of CQ containing restorative materials. However, with the increasing need to dissipate thermal power from the higher rated LED chips, advanced methods such as internal fans and large metal heat sinks were used to remove the heat from the LED arrays. In order to enable curing other restorative material, not only use CQ but use other initiators like CQ plus tertiary amine or leucerine TPO, manufacturer imported more than one color into the LED chipset. This generation of LCUs is also referred to as multi-wave or multi-peak LEDs because they can emit light of more than one color or wavelength range. Different schemas were used to provide the simultaneous combination of violet and blue wavelengths. One solution utilized a strong, centrally positioned, high voltage blue LED surrounded by a four lo lower powered converging violet LEDs. This arrangement is seen in the figure. LEDs deliver a narrow range of wavelengths with many of them not emitting light below 420 nanometers. When using a single peak LED, any initiators which need wavelengths below 420 nanometers are not activated. Multi-peak LEDs deliver light below 420 nanometers, which should effectively activate all other commonly used photo initiators. The third generation curing lights have also seen development of two definite form factors. One factor still utilized a traditional gun style light with the chipset inside of the gun body and uses fiber optic light guides to transmit emitted photons onto the targeted area. Another concept is the use of a pencil style body. Argon laser lamps have the highest intensity and emit at a single wavelength. They work at specific bandwidths of light in the ranges of 454 to 466 nanometers, 472 to 497 and 514 nanometers. Less infrared radiation with less heat generation. Light is highly coherent with small spots size. As you can see, halogen lights offer a broad spectrum output for the universal curing of photoactivated dental resins irrespective of initiator formation, unlike second generation monowave blue LED LC units. Manufacturers have added violet as well as blue LEDs to some third generation units to address this limitation. To date these polyweave LED units, they do not possess the spectral spatial homogeneity of their QTH predecessor. There are various techniques of curing the light. In uniform continuous curing, light of medium constant intensity is applied to the composite for a specific period of time. In step cure, firstly we use low energy and then it is stepped up to high energy. The purpose for step cure is decreasing the degree of polymerization shrinkage and polymerization stresses by allowing the composite to flow while it is in gel state. In ramp cure, the light is applied in low intensity and then gradually increased over the time. It decreases initial stresses and polymerization shrinkage. High energy pulse cure uses a high energy of 1000 to 2800 milliwatt per centimeter square, which is 3 to 6 times the normal power. It is used in bonding of ortho brackets or 
sealants. In pulse delay technique, there is a pause between two pulses. The first pulse is of low intensity and short duration, followed by a second high intensity and long duration pulse. Now let's move towards the fourth generation LED units, ScanWave. A patented wavelength scanning technology incorporated into its mode selection, allowing the dentist to choose the most appropriate spectral output mode and radiation time for any possible material and clinical situation. It has four different diode wavelength offering broad spectrum curing in the full scan mode for all resin based materials, irrespective of their photo initiator chemistry. The diodes are spaced off center, which helps to distribute the energy across the light guide phase and prevents central hotspots, which can occur with high irradiance third generation single blue diode LED units. By sequencing the activation of the different wavelength diodes in scan modes, the manufacturer has integrated broad spectrum curing capability for universal curing of all materials while eliminating overheating issues which challenge unit stability. The soft scan menu allows advocating of soft polymerization to use ramp, pulse and soft stop concepts in a single sequence, optimizing cure while negating high stresses possible with bulk polymerization of fast setting high modules materials and thermal stressing caused by sudden light cessation. ScanWave's dual button activation system coupled with its modified pen style handpiece allows improved ergonomics by allowing either pen or gun style grasps. It also has been designed to meet the best practice from a cross-infection risk viewpoint. Dentistry has evolved significantly in the time that it has been around. Let's take a journey to the time of the first curing lights. First generation LED curing units were small and portable, containing between 7 to 19 low energy LEDs. The second generation LED curing units included LED chips, which increased power outputs for a more effective irradiance. The critical differentiator in third generation curing lights was the combination of basic LEDs emitting complementary identical or different wavelengths altogether. The fourth generation LED curing light uses quad wave technology that uses four wavelengths. NIR that's near infrared, blue, red and ultraviolet. Let us look at the variables in light curing units which affect the degree of polymerization of resin based composites. The first one we'll be looking at is the size of the curing tip. LC units are available in 3, 8, 10, 11, 13 and 14 mm diameter tip. A light curing unit with an 11 mm tip has energy which is more scattered, whereas in a light curing unit with a smaller tip of about 3 mm, the energy is more focused and so less time is taken to cure but at the same time more temperature is produced which can be dangerous to the tooth pulp. The second most important variable we will be looking at is the distance of the tip of the curing unit from the surface of restoration. The distance between the light curing tip and the composite should ideally be within 3 mm of the composite to be effective. Light absorption and scattering in resin composites reduces the power density and the degree of conversion exponentially with the depth of penetration. Thus, the surface must be irradiated for a longer time to deliver sufficient power density well below the surface. Angulation of the curing tip is another variable. It should be parallel to the restoration surface to achieve maximum light intensity. The area of the cure is circular when the tip of the unit is held perpendicular, otherwise it is elliptical. So energy is spread over a greater area which reduces its intensity. Another important variable of light curing units affecting the degree of polymerization of the resin based composites are light source, type of curing unit and exposure time. 
a radiance distribution varies across the light beam for all of the LED curing units. Also, multiple LED chips have different spectral emission wavelengths. This means that the position of the curing unit could have a significant effect on both the radiant power and the wavelength of the light received by the resin-based composite material, both of which could result in suboptimal curing. Therefore, it must be necessary to increase the curing time with increasing distance from the surface of the composite. It is also suggested that the clinician should have knowledge of the beam profile of the LCU in use. Multi-wave LED LCUs have a lack of homogeneity, which lies beyond just the hot and cold spots. Different areas across the tip may have different emissions of violet or blue light. The effect of all this inhomogeneity can negatively affect the micro-hardness and the degree of conversion of the final restoration. A lack of homogeneity should be assumed and the area should be covered more than once with the active tip to ensure adequate polymerization. Recent advancements in light cure led to the introduction of fourth generation LEDs, organic LEDs and quantum dots. Organic LEDs work on electric current wherein there is a formation of organic layer between the two electrodes. Organic LEDs can cause photo initiation in photo curable impression material whose applications are vital bleaching and veneer cementation. Quantum dots are high energy releasing semiconductor nanostructures. They can allow curing from within. Ideally, both the manufacturer and the clinician should consider the following specifications about the LCU. Good selection of power settings and energy delivery modes. An inbuilt radiometer. Cross infection control standards. Irradiance and special output. See if it's cordless or not. And a good range of programmable time settings. The SPEC3 curing light defines performance without compromise. It has multiple modes setting and high intensity output that is 1600 milliwatt per centimeter square for standard mode and 3000 to 3500 milliwatt per centimeter square for 3k mode. It reduces the chair time because it facilitates rapid and deep polymerization of various light cured materials. It has four LEDs to ensure a consistent output and a removable turbo tip. It also has a fiber optic light guide. SPEC3 offers peak wavelength of 470 nanometer, which is closest to camphoroquinone absorbance range and it ensures optimum photo initiation and complete curing. Powerful lithium battery offers enough storage capacity to perform over 310 seconds cures between charges. It also has an auto sleep feature. It has three distinct power modes. Standard mode, which is ideal for most composite curing scenarios. 3K mode, it has a one second cure time and is ideal when there is an issue like a pedo or patients with a gag reflex. And an ortho mode, which cures an entire full arc of brackets within two, three seconds intervals per bracket. Spec 3 has maximum depth of cure ranging from 2 to 3 millimeters, which is more than most other commercially available light curing units. It can cure 2 millimeter composite in just one second as compared to the other LED curing units, which take 3 to 10 seconds to do the same. The Coltelux LED combines a slim curing probe with high output in a cordless, lightweight, pen style design. The Coltelux LED's heat sink technology reduces the amount of heat emission and eliminates the need for active cooling. It has high output LEDs for faster cures. The LED light output matches the absorption spectrum of camphoroquinone photo initiators. It has audible signal every 10 seconds and an automatic power saving sleep mode 
after 20 seconds of operation. It can cure hundreds of cures with a fully charged battery. The slim curing probe is ideal for hard to reach posterior areas. Its slim shape enhances visibility of the restorative material during the light curing process. The dome shaped lens concentrates light output on the restoration. Because of high output LED, fast curing can be achieved. Coltelux can cure 2 mm composite resin in just 10 seconds. Also, the temperature rise is lesser as compared to the other LED curing units. Thus, the practitioner has the greatest freedom to cope with the diverse demands of modern clinical practice. Advances in material science will underpin further developments and assist dentists in choosing appropriate radiation protocols for specific materials and clinical situations, thus allowing them to provide optimal care for their patients. With recent advances in LED technology, we can be assured that the future for dentists using the light curing units is indeed bright.